Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com, the climate guy setting the record straight about climate. With July 4th upon us, this is a good time to discuss past heat waves. The hottest temperature ever recorded on Earth was in 1913 in California, when Greenland Ranch reached 134 degrees. And America's hottest July 4th occurred in 1911. There was a lot of hot weather in the U.S. before 1960. But since 1960, hot weather has become much less common in the United States, and I'll show you that later. July 4, 1911 was so hot in the United States that people were actually committing suicide to escape the heat, and thermometers were bursting because the mercury in them expanded too much. All heat records in New England were broken. At Burlington, Vermont, the Weather Bureau reported a temperature of 100 degrees. Bernie Sanders probably remembers that. That's where he lives. I spent most of May and June camped out in Burlington last year, and the weather was lovely, but I suspect I wouldn't have enjoyed it so much in 1911. Now let's look at a graph of July 4th temperatures in the U.S. since 1895. This graph shows the percent of United States historical climatology network stations over 100 degrees Fahrenheit on July 4th. That's the official NOAA temperature record for the United States. As you can see, the frequency of July 4th hot weather has declined in the United States since 1895. And 1911 was by far the hottest July 4th, when more than one-third of U.S. stations were over 100 degrees. Other really hot years were 1936, 1901, and 1934. Those were the four hottest July 4ths in U.S. history. The atmosphere reached 350 parts per million CO2 in 1988, right around here. And as you can see, the frequency of hot weather has been quite low since CO2 went above 350 parts per million. But hot weather was much more common when CO2 was closer to 300 parts per million. There is no correlation between hot weather and atmospheric carbon dioxide. The claimed correlation between hot weather and atmospheric carbon dioxide, often made by scientists, is simply fake news. There's no science behind this. Now let's look at the actual temperatures on July 4th, 1911. The red pins represent locations over 100 degrees on July 4th, 1911, and the yellow pins represent locations that were over 90 degrees on that day. As you can see, temperatures were over 100 degrees all the way from California, way up into Maine, and the central part of the country was incredibly hot. Almost everywhere was over 100 degrees. Let's zoom in on New England now. Temperatures in Maine were consistently 102 degrees on July 4, 1911. Temperature in Lawrence, Massachusetts was 106 degrees. At Amherst, it was 104 degrees. The temperature at Addison, New York was 106 degrees. The temperature at Ithaca, where Cornell University is located, was 102 degrees. Temperatures were 100 degrees all through Vermont and New Hampshire. And in fact, July 4th, 1911 was the hottest day that Maine has ever had, with atmospheric CO2 at 300 parts per million. Now let's look at the Midwest. Look at all those red pins. Almost the entire Midwest was over 100 degrees. It was 104 degrees in Michigan. It was 104 degrees in Wisconsin. We don't see temperatures like that anymore. Now let's look at July 4th, 2016, which climate scientists say was the hottest year ever. As you can see, there was very little 100 degree weather in the U.S. last year on July 4th, and there was almost no 90 degree weather in the northeastern part of the country. 2016 was much cooler than 1911 on July 4th. So a skeptical person will naturally question what I'm saying and say, well, maybe he's just cherry picking July 4th. So let's look at that. These two graphs are for the entire year. The one on the left is the average percent of days over 90 degrees Fahrenheit at all NOAA United States Historical Climatology Network stations. Over the last century, the frequency of 90 degree days in the United States has plummeted. And since 1960, they've become very rare. And I'm not just cherry picking 90 degree weather either. This is the same graph for 100 degree weather. And we see exactly the same thing. 
It was very hot in the 1930s, very hot in the 1950s. We had a hot year in 1980, but generally since 1960, 100 degree days have become quite rare in the United States. As atmospheric CO2 has increased, the frequency of hot days has decreased, the exact opposite of what climate experts claim. Now let's look at the latest fake news about heat waves being reported by the press. This article is from today. It was published by fellow Coloradan Bob Berwin a few hours ago. It says, simultaneous widespread global heat waves are the new norm, the exact opposite of what the data shows. Upton Sinclair famously said, it's very difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on him not understanding it. And Noah certainly doesn't want you to know about the past heat in the United States. The blue line is the actual measure temperature at all of the United States Historical Climatology Network stations. The 1930s were hotter, but the red line shows what they report to the public. NOAA dramatically cools past temperatures to hide past heat like the record July 4th in 1911 and the world's record heat in California in 1913. These so-called scientists have a severe conflict of interest. Their funding and their jobs depend on maintaining the global warming scam. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.